Welcome to Jim Gatewood's Dallas History Series. Meet Captain Will Fritz, the Dallas super cop who resolved the Kennedy assassination as a mafia hit three hours after Oswald pulled the trigger. This practical cop refused the role of chief. Chiefs have a way of getting fired, he told a friend. As a captain, he had more flexibility to clamp down on organized crime and street gangs in Dallas. This is the book that names the old Dallas mob families and brings to life their relationships long hidden from public view. Dallas wouldn't be the same had not Benny Binion stepped off the boxcar from El Paso with his saddle that night, and Benny wouldn't have been the same if he hadn't run into a young Bill Decker from the Sheriff's Department in the train yard. Over time, and through his powerful connections like Joe Savello, Joe Campisi, and Warren Diamond, Benny became the largest force in Dallas bootlegging in the game. Yes, this is the same Benny Binion of the Horseshoe Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. This is a great story of one door closing and another opening. Sheriff Bill Decker was a modern knight, alone without any armor in a dangerous land. He was armed only with his ironclad morals, courage, determination, and his favorite weapon, the Thompson submachine gun. Think Elliot Ness without federal funding. Decker's Dallas was the time of the Ku Klux Klan, Bonnie and Clyde, Benny Binion, and Fred Browning. He was in the lead car when Kennedy was shot and controlled security for the event. It seems like everyone has a story about Bill Decker, and a lot of them are in this book. The stories of J. Frank Norris, Baptist preacher and inspiration for the movie Elmer Gantry, Fred Browning's nationally renowned Top of Hill Casino and championship fighter Lou Jenkins are all intertwined in this fascinating slice of Dallas history. The Top of Hill Casino was host to movie, mob, and media celebrities from across America. In this book, you will learn about the first megachurch, First Baptist of Fort Worth, Texas, and the infamous J. Frank Norris's crusade to, among other things, close the casino. Slats Rogers was born without the fear bone. His early obsession with flying resulted in him building Texas's first airplane. To support himself, he drove trains and there learned the fine art of delivering whiskey to less fortunate regions of the Southwest. Soon, he was able to afford aircraft worthy of his abilities. He was one of the first barnstormers and led the Love Field Lunatics on Sunday afternoon death-defying follies at the military field. Men like Slats usually lived short, colorful lives, but that was not his style. He lived a long storied life that makes him a great reader. Jim Gatewood is America's foremost author and storyteller about the days of Dallas yesteryears. His new book is John F. Kennedy Assassination, The Conspiracy. Here's a short preview from the author himself. The book should be out in late November works the bolt for his third shot, but there is a second gunman. The second gunman is a Dallas County Deputy Sheriff by the name of Harry Weatherford. He is on top of the county records building, which is 63 yards from the school book depository. He was put up there by Sheriff Bill Decker to protect the President of the United States. When the first shot was fired, pigeons flew up off the top of the school book depository. Weatherford had no target. But when the second shot was fired, he saw the muzzle flash in the sixth floor window. So he did the only thing he could do. He swung his rifle around, but he could not get Oswald in the sights. He could get the muzzle of Oswald's rifle. The only thing he can do is to fire it. Now in the meantime, Oswald is about to take his third shot. The limousine has slowed almost to a stop and Jacqueline is coming out over the back end of the car. Oswald holds the Kennedys in contempt and hates them, and if he kills Jacqueline, this will send a message of fear to all ruling governments all over the country and let them know the Mafia is really the boss of what's going on. But while he's thinking and considering, and while his finger is tightening on that trigger, Harry Weatherford fires his shot. 
The bullet flashes in front of Oswald just as his finger tightens enough to squeeze the third shot, and as a result, it goes high, completely missing the motorcade, hits the curb on the other side of the street, and ricochets into the steel curtain of the triple underpass. Harry Weatherford is an unsung hero of the motorcade. He saved Jacqueline Kennedy's life. Learn more about Jim Gatewood and his books at www.dcarb.com. That's www.dcarb.com. Thanks for watching.